Oh, hello. Oh, from BC. Welcome back to my show. I thought I'd get in front of the camera this time. Say hello to everybody out there. Show you a few gadgets I've picked up off eBay and elsewhere in the last few weeks. Look at a bit of tool and cutter grinder accessories and home built gear. I'll have a very short session on setting up a slitting saw by the book and show you the charts and with a bit of luck some four facet drill grinder. So first up, little USB power pack. Cost me $98. Uh, charges from the USB off your phone. Also has two USB outlets and this is very very handy. My phone is always running out but I found another use for it. $29 from the little Chinese shop. Bought it for Christmas. Oh heck, it's supposed to be pointed at me. Absolutely terrific. And if you can get the controller. You have many different options in what sort of colour of light, how intense you want it. There we go. Different colours and different brightnesses. It comes with a little tripod, uh, which is good for on the bench to work like this, like an interview. But also, this was another beautiful bike. Bench mount microphone. Here. And it is just so good for holding this light, holding a microphone, holding a camera. I have to make an adapter here for Porter UNC for camera work. That was about 29 bucks. I couldn't make it for a thousand for man hours. Uh, very, very good. Stretches out, swivels round, that's what you want. Very, very nice. Right. Find out how to work that one day. Okay, back to some serious business. What have we got that goes on the film and cutter grinder that you can actually make a pump? Now that should be interesting. I think I need a bit more light. So we'll turn that on. That's a little bit better, I think. I hope it is. Okay, first thing, not used very often, a pair of centers. And hopefully one that's machined away or ground away. That is really good for grinding tacks or any cutter where you come over the top of the cutter. You can rotate that so you can escape from the top or rotate it around there, escape out of the side. Not very difficult to make. You can fabricate all of these and then bore them in the mill and that way your bore will be parallel to the base. So accuracy is something you don't really have to know about. Right I think we've all seen this before, but it's worth a mention. That's a subplate that bolts to the top of the film and cutter grinder. It gives me about two 30mm extension in most directions, holding the index up or work in. I use this frequently and I've even used it on the milling machine. Pretty good idea. Easy to make and it was made mostly on the shaper, except for the holes of course. Film and cutter, accessories, an extension shaft at Clarkson half inch BSF left hand at both ends. That gets the wheel outside of the wheel guard envelope, mm -hmm. worse luck, but it gives you a bit more reach. It reaches something that you really want. Well, scratching around in the box of goodies, as well as bushes and things, and that's a one inch arbor for holding saws, etc. The Clarkson runs on plain collets, or plain bushes, not collets, and you have a grub screw that comes through from the outside of the holder through there onto the shank. Uh, got a set of these in metric and imperial. Takes a bit of getting used to using them, but luckily they were made very, very well and it's not a lot of slot. The hold of that, by the way, is up on the tuna cut line. You'll find you'll be making a lot of little bushings so that you can use uh, larger wheels with a small half inch shaft. Flanges. I prefer to make something substantial and while you're making the flange just put a little bit of a dish on the inside. If you don't put a dish in you'll find that they'll wear on the outer edge, the wheels won't be supported and eventually you'll have a bad item. 
aluminium is quite a good product for pushing. Here is the work head, just a weldment, absolutely dead easy. Bush that turns inside it, bronze bushes, 25mm sharp. I don't know what the heck they made it for, but uh, it's well made, it's robust, it shows that these things are reasonably easy. And after I finish here, I'll take you up onto the Clarkson and you can have a look at the factory made work here. That's a fairly simple one as well. Here's Bargain Boy 5C collar roller block and 5C to ER32 chuck. Now these were about $68 for the square and the hex. This is about another $68. Drop that through there. I can use the ER32 pots. And now I have a squaring block. 180 degrees for doing drill grinding. Quite a good item. Or you can have the hex in there if you want to do three foot cutters. Worth the money to buy those accessories and it reduces the number of different collet types that I have. I prefer the ER series because they close at both ends and you tend to get a little bit more collapse in the collet. This is a little beauty. Once again, Flea Bay, I think about $70 for the full set of collets, up to 12 millimeter. And I'll be using that later today to four facet grind a little drill. Uh, plant shake, 16 millimeter, so I can use it either in a ER style chuck or in one of these plain bushes in the Clarkson workhead but that really does give me um, a lot of usefulness and goes up inside the milling chuck if I want to do any small milling inside pockets etc. Gives me a little bit of extra reach. Digging around underneath the tunnel car grinder two weekends ago I found the arbor for the slitting saw which has been precision made. I think it must be a factory job. Very good half inch shaft with a boss, one inch at the front. So I thought I'd go back and rummage through the pile again. Three more factory harbors, all different sizes. So it's amazing what you find in your glory box if you've got no idea you have. Here are some indexes that came with a very old tool and cutter grinder. Just a bit of power hacksaw blade. It's been fitted into a little finger. Now that is a very rough and ready piece of steel that somebody's been indexed with. If it works, it's a good job. And this big blocky thing, it's a spring loaded, came with the Cincinnati number two. So another terrific model. Just shows you you don't need all the Big dollar items to do tunnel cutter grinding, do the basic uh, work at home. I was thinking of trying to draw up a simple tunnel cutter grinder, but I remember the site I came across. If you do a Google on Tinker, T I N K E R, tunnel cutter grinder, there's a bloke in the States that sells the drawings for it. They're reasonably priced, the posts out here. You can make it out of billet or you can buy a couple of castings of him, and it will do almost anything on a little six inch bench grinder. So for home tool grinding, that is another way you can go. Okay, I'll turn you off now, bring you in closer to the book, and we'll do something on sleeping for this. Back again, inside the little book that comes with the tool and cutter grinder, and a bit of explanation on how to set up the slitting saws. It's a very difficult chart to uh, blow up because it's so damn small to start with. What we have over here the diameter of the grinding wheel, 6 inch diameter, diameter of the cutter is there. Now if we come down you'll see the diameter of the cutter increases and last week we had a 6 inch diameter cutter and the amount of offset for centre height is 5 16th. This week we have a 3 inch cutter and the distance of offset is still 5 16th. 
so that means that the grinding wheel has to be 5 16 below the center height of the cutter. So that's how you use the chart. Release and clearances for spiral fluted cutters, that's what it's originally used for. And you have a second chart there for secondary relief. And you can see that it's a heck of a lot more. Okay, we'll get the height gauge over to the tool and cutter grinder and have a look. Okay, back again, I'm setting up for the slitting saws. Take a still shot while I think of it. Uh, we have the extension table in to give a bit more of a platform. Small height gauge. We get to the centre of the wheel. Same height as the centre of the cutter arbour. And the same height of the tooth to the ground. And accuracy of within a thou or two is all that you really need. Now at this point, the arc of the wheel being in centre line will give you no clearance on the cutting edge. The heel and the toe of the land will be at the same height, so the cutter just won't cut. So stop this and move the tripod. Carson have built in a rather ingenious rise and fall system on the work head, sorry the wheel head. So now we'll drop the cutter and if I was serious I would measure it till the wheel centre is 5 16 below the work centre. Now the arc that the wheel is cutting will cut more on the the heel of the land than it would at the front of the cutting edge. So the radius of the wheel will create the clearance behind the cutting edge to the correct amount set to the chart. Um, doesn't take much to get your head around it and it's incredible how accurate and how good this gives you the clearance that you're after for the cutter. Uh, it's also used on peripheral teeth of reamers etc. The Americans don't do a flat clearance grind, they do a concave clearance grind and it works really really well. The chart's available in Machinery Handbook and usually a chart comes with all the two and cutter drivers. Okay YouTubers, here we are about to start four facet grinding on a 12mm drill. We have the original Clarkson workhead, ER32 collet. I've set the angle downwards by the angle gauge on the head and I'm grinding off the edge which I don't like but I can't reverse the Clarkson to grind in the other direction so that will be a problem. But we'll see what we come up with. So it's 10 degrees in the first facet. I did try and use the indexer off the top onto my collar but the long screw I have on the back here interfered with it and I spent too much time already on this. I'd forgotten how I did it last time. Just too many projects to do. So I'll turn you off while I get power going and then we'll start to grind a four facet drill. Back again, power up. Just take a few power at a time. Another couple. Primary pass is coming up okay. We might be just a little bit off on our angle, but that's more for aesthetics to keep the customer happy. I'm not that happy. Get this coming along quite good.
one more and we'll get one. Bring it up to the light, you can see the facet is about two and a half mil wide. It should be enough for me to angle the head down a further 15 degrees and then grind secondary relief. I'll do that off camera because it could take a bit. Okay, we'll have another go at the other facet. Just a couple of hours of time. Let's see what that turns like. That's a bit of a better look. I rotated it a little under the light. You can see I didn't quite have the edge dead straight for the second cut, secondary relief, but it's brought it back to a reasonable point. I didn't grind all of the heel off, that would just be wasting material on the drill. And I don't believe in giving the secondary relief that much clearance. All you do is weaken the point of the drill. And surprisingly a reasonable finish, even though I was grinding off the edge, and not a big applicable burr as expected. I may still run a stone over that but it's pretty well as sharp as a razor blade. So a steady hand, a good setup. I would like to index off the back and I'll be getting rid of that screw there and putting a shorter screw in so that I can have the little indexer over the top. That way I wouldn't have to move the finger rest when I change the angle on the drill for the secondary grind. You can see a little bit of frittering uh, the burr's gone just with a touch of the finger, so it was only a hundredth of a thou. But there's the primary shining, and there you can see the secondary quite clear. They taper a little bit like that if you don't get the angle correct. Um, the edge dead horizontal. You can't correct it using the finger rest and adjust it backwards and forwards, but as long as it drills the hole, I'm satisfied. But there you are, Clarkson tool and cutter grinder. The table was set over. To 31 degrees using a little protractor such as that and angle set off the dial at the back of the bracket there. Okay we'll put this into a video and up on YouTube.